lovely to see so many here. And uh, I think we've got to the point where we actually need to share some of our hymn books and our water services. But it's absolutely wonderful. So today is a day where we come back to the Hallelujah. And it's a day where we can actually say the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. So our first hymn is 147. 147. <coughs>
we pray together. Heavenly Father, we have shamed in thought, word, and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of life. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on me and set you free from sin. Strengthen your goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. The response to part of Psalm 118 is, The Lord is my strength and my song. Alleluia. The Lord is my strength and my song. Alleluia. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. Joyful shouts of salvation sound from the tents of the righteous. The Lord is my strength and my song. Hallelujah. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. The Lord is my strength and my song. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The Lord is my strength and my song. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is my strength and my song. Hallelujah. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I have proclaimed to you, which you in turn receive, in which also you stand through which you also have been saved. And if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And then he appeared to seek us, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of, all, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they. So we proclaim, and so have you come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. Listen to the gospel of Christ according to the saints now. <laughs> Over. Mary 
Mary Madeline, and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look. There is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he's gone ahead of you to the Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. The terror and amazement had seized him. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Amen. It's always a long time for the speech to be. Yeah, I'm sure. So, what is Pilate? Ask Joseph, who are we here? I don't get it. You are one of the richest men around. You paid all that money to have this wonderful, this beautiful tool cut out in the rock for you and for your family. And you now want to give it to Jesus. Joseph. It's only for the weekend. <laughs> that sums up the Easter story. All on the weekend. So it's wonderful to be in the school and to see so many of you. And after the service, while you're having refreshments, go and look at our Easter garden. Compliments for the school. <laughs> because they've been left here. So it is wonderful because if you look, you can see the little sort of tombs there and you can see that you know, the stones have been rolled away, all very creative. But I think it's wonderful because we can't obviously have flowers in the normal way. We can't do certain things in the normal way. But it's great that we can look at the little Easter garden because that's really what it's all about, the tomb was open. So, what are we going to do as God's people? Well, it was in 2021 that Professor Alice Roberts, who I really like, I really like her digging for Britain, but she is a staunch atheist, staunch atheist, uh, and she, she really doesn't like the Christian you know, story, the gospel, and she doesn't get resurrection. She actually had said, you know, on Twitter, and I've used this before, just a little reminder today, dead people don't come back to life. And then a very well-known priest and theologian reminded her and said, uh, will you tell it or shall I? 
You know, we are witnesses. We are the ones who have to tell her and tell the world the good news of the gospel. There have been many religious and political leaders who influenced the world, left a legacy, have actually <coughs> changed society. Let me name some of them for you. And then I wonder what is the same about them, but what is also different. Gautama Buddha. Muhammad, Guru Nanak, Alexander the Great, Augusta, he's a lot to do with Kenya, by the way, <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi, Julius Caesar, Constantine, Adolf Hitler, Lenin. Lenin's tomb in Russia displays his body. <coughs> it's in an airtight container, glass container. His body kept. But in his life, he led the revolution, didn't he? A bloody one. Enslaved his people, shattered followers' of dreams. That's a I hope. Just that, in some way, was the tomb. But then there's a tomb in Jerusalem that many, many pilgrims go, the tomb where Jesus was laid. And some have been here. But Jesus isn't there, is he? <coughs> because he was resurrected. He began a revolution that freed us from sin from pain, from agony, from despair. Jesus is a storyteller, a teacher, a miracle worker, promise keeper, way maker, and he's like the world. In John's Gospel, we read the I am sayings. This is who Jesus is. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the Lord. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the light. I am the I am the resurrection and the life. None of the others came back from the dead. Only Jesus. That is why I serve him. Why we worship him. Why we gather, not just here in the school, but across the land, across the world. Because Jesus is unlike any other <coughs> leader that has ever lived. But we know he had to die first. You can't have the resurrection without death. You can't skip to the Easter eggs, though we've all tried, yes, we You can't have Easter without the Friday. Now, on my, my social media, get adverts, like this all on our little feed, and there was one that actually said for a restaurant, Happy Good Friday. This was on Friday. Happy Good Friday. I didn't quite know how to respond to that. I thought, oh, now, it is a good Friday, and anything that's good, think of the, the angel of Jesus' birth, <coughs> like, you know, so when this good mentioned in the Bible, says, something good is going to happen. Good times of great joy, I think. Good Friday. But happy Good Friday? I thought, I don't think they quite got it right. That was my... You think about that, you have your own responses. Discuss later. And then, I'm sure you all know about the Hot Cross Bun debate. Arby's. A certain supermarket, Iceland, decided, they took a little bit of a, a little pole and decided to replace 
the cross with a little tape. A little bit like the Nike. And it did cause a few little issues, and Iceland did remove them. When a number were interviewed, one first said, well, what's wrong with the, the little tip? Because they, they couldn't understand the symbolism and the meaning of the cross. <coughs> but those who knew, and one said, when interviewed, the cross is symbolic of Christ's death on the cross. A tip means nothing. I thought, oh, spot on, you. Spot on. So, we are the people of the cross, but actually of the resurrection. We are the resurrection people. And you can see the Paschal candle is your reminder that Jesus is the light of the world. The St. Joseph era last night was brought in darkness, symbolizing when did Jesus rise in the hands. And as he was lit, the Paschal candle, so the lights in the church came on. And all the candles in the church were lit. Jesus is the light of the world. My goodness, we need light, don't we? The world is messy. And more need to know the cross and the resurrection than ever. What about us? We are witnesses of a kind. We weren't with those early disciples. We weren't at the tomb with Marys. And there were a lot of Marys. <laughs> we weren't there. And I love the way that the angel was there, sitting, taking time out, actually, <coughs> waiting for the camera. Jesus is risen. And the shock the wonder. Go tell the other disciples and Peter. Peter, we know, the betrayer. The one who denied him three times. And Peter. So let us be an Easter people, not ashamed of the gospel, but actually telling others this is what it's all about. So I'm going to finish with. The beautiful Easter sermon, not the whole one, I got you, <laughs> of St. John Chrysostomer, always <coughs> read at Easter. And he was a bishop that goes all the way back to the 4th century. Let us enter into the joy of the Lord. First and last alike, receive your reward. Rich and poor, rejoice together. Sober and soulful, celebrate the day. You that have kept the past, and you that have not, rejoice today. <coughs> the table is richly laden. Feast royally on it. The calf is a fatty one. Let no one go away hungry. Partake all of the cup of faith. Enjoy all the riches of his goodness. Christ is risen, and you, O oh death, are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is liberated. Christ is risen. And the tomb emptied of its dead. For Christ, having risen from the dead, is become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Charles, Father John Broder, and the lead representative Francis Buchanan. We pray that today your church throughout the world will continue to proclaim with joy the truth and wonder of your risen Son. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for ourselves. You know the needs of human life. As we seek to live our lives according to your example, help us by your presence to overcome our hasty speech that hurts others, to be free from greed and selfishness, and from pride and jealousy that spoils our lives. Christ is risen. Father, we pray that your Spirit may guide and strengthen us in mission and service to you, to our community, and to the world outside, in whatever way we can each contribute. And we pray that day by day we may draw closer to you, experiencing your infinite love. Crush is risen. Father, at this joyful Easter time, we pray for our families and friends. We thank you for the sending and receiving Easter cards and messages of love and for modern communication systems, which can bring loved ones closer, even when we are separated by great distance. Christ is risen. Merciful Lord, we thank you for the efforts of the peacemakers around the world working tireless to bring reconciliation where there is a strife. We pray that all the world leaders play their part and strive for truth, 
justice, reconciliation, and peace. Give wisdom and compassion to all in authority that they may bring to Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, Russia, Nigeria. We pray for all the nations of the world that the people will learn to live together with respect and love for one another. Christ is risen. Father, we pray that all goes well with every person of our church. We pray for our church family, the contractors, architects, and project management team, for support and ongoing fundraising and opportunities and successful grant applications. Christ is risen. Heavenly Father, protect King Charles and his beloved daughter in law, the Princess of Wales. Please guide with wisdom all the doctors and nurses who provide healing and tender care for them. We pray for all those who are suffering, be it in mind, body, or soul. We think especially of Annie Kaduna, Mary Parker. Brenda Bond, David Power, Betty Watkins, Olivia Young, Susan, John Edwards, Alan Williams, Jim Purse, John Davis, Felicity Stevens, Stafford Sherwood, Jill Jack, Veronica Moody, Tony Edwards, and for the venerable Ambrose Mason. Christ is risen. Merciful Father, we pray that those who have recently died, and today especially we pray for the soul of David Rodney, may one day share in the promise of new life, one for us, all by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, and his triumph over death and the grave. Christ is risen. Amen. And in a moment of stillness, let us offer our own prayers and needs to God. Faithful God, we go out in the world. We pray that we may reflect your love in our own families, our church, our community, so that the world can witness that we are followers of Christ and draw others into this living care. Joining our voices with the blessed Mary, Virgin Mary, Saint Catherine, and all the saints, we pray. Merciful Father, accept this prayer for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, you know our brothers and enter the private and with your grace. To this your kingdom's peace, no one can be mine through the which our souls cry out. But if they are more accountable, it can be greater than my precious truth. But in and through this bread and wine, your love may be just until I have to be just. The power and glory of your kingdom. Amen. We come to the feast if you're able. Please stand. <laughs> the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were overjoyed on seeing the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let all wonder a sign of God's peace. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
restore to us eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim 
proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and sing. <laughs> Break this bread 
to share in the body of Thank <laughs> you. 
So perhaps should we continue on each Wednesday and then hopefully going forward we will also have uh, the bells run on a Sunday. The progress is, is coming along. Um, I tried to put things out on social media and uh, if you look at the part of the weekly notice you can see some of the photographs of the inside of the church. Uh, can I say the scale of it isn't really represented here. Those of us who have been in the church, you think, great space. No floor, but what a great space. <laughs> we will have a floor. And uh, can I just sort of say, you know, we, we're really excited at um, how wonderful it's going to be. So part of it is, you know, you sit on chairs, we will have chairs in the church, uh, but they won't be as squeaky as these, okay? They won't be as squeaky, and we'll make sure you've got a place for your books to go as well. So the chair sponsorship is going to be launched next Sunday, so we'll have all the links you know, to uh, how to give, and uh, you know, if you want to write a check, then just think how to do it. You see a button in the back, chair sponsorship, just give in the normal sort of thing, and of course, you know, cash, we still use cash. <laughs> uh, so we will just, because we will need chairs to sit on, otherwise you'll be bringing in your deck chairs. And, uh, you know, it's all the bean bags. We don't want that. So it is a wonderful project, and uh, we want you to, to be part of that. So on the wiki notice, you can see the type of chairs that you will be sat on. As you're aware, there is a murder mystery dinner, which is going to be held in this hall. So you can see Chris or Caroline after the service to discuss that. During our last hymn, I'm going to invite the children to give out some eggs. You can't have Easter without the eggs. <laughs> and it's a reminder the eggs are given because it represents the empty tomb, not an empty tummy. An empty tomb. Okay, so uh, I'm going to bless these eggs, and then the children will come down, and during that final game, we'll make sure that um, they can distribute them. So, So, loving God, thank you for the symbol of the resurrection, of the empty tomb that these eggs represent. <coughs> we pray that all who receive them and God will us and will be truly blessed in story. And we bless in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So we come to the Sending Out Prayers on page three. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Living God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son for the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemies. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. We thank you, Father, for feeding us to the body and life of your Son in this holy sacrament, in which we are assured of the hope of eternal life. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Keep us in the fellowship of this body of church, and send us out to the power of your spirit, to live and will to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us the victory. Give you joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this joyful Easter. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.